Welcome to One to One, the show where I interview some of the up and coming artists who I think are destined for big things. On today's show, we have a broccoli boy, a Lucian legend, and a living legend. It's Yizzy. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, bro? it's a quid intro still. Yeah. <laughs> so, bro, I'm going to get straight into it, bro. Um, mm. So, when it comes to Graham, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to say like, I'm the biggest guy, um, person when it comes to Graham. Like, I, I, I pay attention. Mm. But I, I'm not like, I don't listen to it in my free time all the time and stuff like that. But when I first heard you, you gave me that energy of like a chip, like Westwood freestyle, mm. like shelling, like hunger. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it stood out to me, do you know what I'm saying? I appreciate it, man. Um, and then I found out that like you only started Grime like two years ago. Mm. 16 years. <laughs> so like, how did, how did that, how'd you get into it? Like, how did that happen? Do you know what it is? It's weird. I was doing grime before I knew it was like grime. So imagine I'm in school and I'm just like messing about with my friends spitting bars. And then next thing I know, like, I don't know, it's like a couple of weeks later or that, and I'm sitting down, just me and my boys are chilling on like a bench in the park. Mm. And then like one of the olders comes and he's like, my brother must be like, oh yeah, you know we can spit. And he's like, you can spit? I was like, yeah. He was like, oh, I've got a studio if you're serious, blah, 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 blah. So I spat the bars to him on the instrumental. Mm. And he was like, you know what? That's not even like rap, that's grime. And I was like, oh, oh that's grime. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, it was like, I knew what grime was, but it's, I didn't know I was doing it. Like, I've been doing it and listening to it before I fully understood what it was. What it was yeah. So the way I was spitting bars and everything, I started going and like watching old sets and old songs and different bits and it's like I just kind of gravitated towards it and mm. like I really enjoyed kind of doing it so I stuck with it. I stuck with it. So like you just mentioned sets then like mm. I, I, I read somewhere that your approach to sets is like any anytime you're in a set like you just want to make sure you want to give the best version of yourself you want to just yeah. like be the best. So anytime. when I was kind of starting out as being an MC the main thing was try and do, sounds like silly, but it was like, try and do your best and just like, try to stand out if you can, just spit your bars and just make sure you're on point. Yeah, yeah. But once I began getting comfortable in my own skin, like in terms of spitting bars, I could walk onto a set with with anyone. It didn't have to be people my own age or established artists mm. or, or the, the big pioneers. I could step on, it got to the point where I could step on any set and I could spit my bars and show down whether I was with people or whether I was on my ones. I could right. do an hour set by myself and still show. Mm -hmm. And it was when I kind of realised that and, and not perfected, but kind of honed my craft to that point, mm -hmm. that's when I kind of clocked that it's good spitting on a set. It's not a thing anymore for me. It's like as natural as breathing. Like when I step onto a set, whether I'm with 20 people and I manage to get off a 16 bar or mm -hmm. it's just me and I get off like a 32 or whatever it is, I'm going to show down that set regardless because I know exactly what I'm doing now. Yeah. yeah. So... That's kind of my approach to sets now. I just see it as, I don't think, all right, I'm going on a set, cool, got to prepare. I see it as I'm going on a set and I'm going to show and do my thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's like, like, my, it's like my opportunity. Like, yeah, just, it's, it's, it's not even, I guess for you, it's like, it's like the same way you might, you might write a bar yeah. in your in your spare time, like that's mm. that's from your head to your, to the paper. Like it's, it's natural, I guess for you it's a, sh a, a set mm. is just as natural as, as that. Like it's just I don't know at this point. The only way I can put it is like saying that doing a set is like business as usual because as an right. MC and as a grime artist, you're expected to do sets and it shouldn't be a thing for you. It mm. should just be another part. You get me live is live is one part, uh song recording is one part. Writing bars for radio is one part, right, right, spitting right. on the sets another part. Another it should part. just be a part you can do. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, MCing is the is the as a gram artist, if you put it in like a little pillar of I don't know, song recording, MC and blah blah blah. MCing is the basic level, the very first level that you need to do mm -hmm. is learning how to control a mic, be a mic controller and be comfortable with it to do it anywhere, whether it's by yourself or not. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, I, I was happy that I had achieved that foundation yeah, level yeah. if I could do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I've, I enjoy spitting on sets now and it's like, I can do that comfortably. So from you starting in 2016, yep. what made you, how did you know like, cool, that like, that's the, me doing the sets and like, me getting 
my music out to these radio stations, or whatever. Like mm. that's that's the route to go down. Because I'm sure there's a lot of artists out there that like. Mm. In fact, I know there's a lot of artists out there that make music, whether it's grime or whatever. Mm-hmm. But they, they don't know how to get their song, their music out there, or, or the best way to de- to develop or move forward. So how did you know like that was the route to to go down? So I made a song, and I looked for what the closest radio station was next to me at the time, and it was Represent Radio, yeah. and. I already had friends that had been on Represent Radio and I'd already been to that radio and met one of the presenters mm. and, and kind of seen firsthand what goes on. So from when I saw that my brethren were doing that, I was like, I can definitely do this. Like, even if they were doing like rap or Afrobeat or whatever yeah, it is, yeah. they still got on the radio and they got their song played. So I know I can do that or I thought I had a good chance, mm-hmm. especially because I'd already spoken to the presenter. So I spoke to her, she was like, drop me an email of the songs, whatever, we'll see what we can do, we'll have a listen, blah, blah, blah. Dropped the email, played the song, which was mad dropped another email of another song, then said, come, let's do an interview. Mm. Did an interview on radio, first time ever. I got two songs played on there. And I was like, OK, so radio is accessible. What was that feeling like, though, having your song on the radio? Like? It was crazy. I, I still got videos from when, like, I was sitting there in the chair, like, Snapchatting myself, because mm. it, was, it was a proper moment. <laughs> it was a moment, it was like, yeah, for real. It was mad. But that's when it showed me that radio is accessible and obviously radio is a big part of being like an artist you have to you need to get your songs played on radio really mm. to reach a certain audience and 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 things like that so it's like from when radio is accessible i took it a bit more seriously because i was like you know what i can actually do this and then i don't know maybe like five six months later started obviously developing doing better songs I linked up with my manager, I had a song at the time that was done called Grime Kid, which mm. is probably like my first proper song that I ever did. And we put it out. No, we didn't put it out. That's the maddest thing. <laughs> it never got put out on like Spotify or anything. Right. But it got me my first ever play on BBC. Okay. But it wasn't one extra, which is what a lot of people start on. Mm. I got a play on Radio One. Okay. Which is big like it's hard to get a play on Radio yeah, One compared sure. to one extra. Mm-hmm. And it was literally two weeks after so I was I'd done the song when I was sixteen and then two weeks later I had my birthday, two weeks later, within two weeks, I think it was like January fourteenth, uh twenty seventeen. Boom on Radio One, wow. so that's when I was like, okay, <laughs> it's proper now. Yeah, like, yeah. I've got, I can get that those big boy plays if that makes sense. Wow. Then, so, yeah, that was a moment. I still got them videos. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, obviously, like sets are a, a big important part, like you just said, yeah. of, of grind, but also clashes are as well. Mm-hmm. So like, when when you first kind of exploring Graham and like studying Graham, like what, what was your favourite clashes and are you open to doing game clashes? My favourite clashes... I don't know if it's really a clash, but Griminal and Chip. Mm. Um, of recent P Money Dot Run. Yeah. <laughs> that's a sick clash mm. and, and exchange to watch. Um, yeah, that was, that was interesting stuff. <laughs> I don't know, like the old school ones is is weird. I can't remember who it was, but someone was on Westwood and I know Getz was there, Temper T was there, Blax was there. I think Getz was... I don't know if Getz was clashing OGs or, or whoever it was, but mm. he was basically getting spun by Blax and Temper T. And he didn't know what to do. He was in the middle of Blacks and Temper <laughs> T and Jammer at the back going crazy. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, you're Getz, you're the cold spitter, but in that room of so much energy and hype, you're getting spun. Mm. So it was like, that was sick to watch as well. Sometimes it's not even clashes, it's when you're rallying and it just kind of turns into a back-to-back, so you've got better bars. Like, yeah, there's yeah. bad times when it was like, I think it was Skepta and Getz that was freestyling and like, it was crazy they were coming out with new lyrics mad different variations I was like raw this is crazy mm. like you got other clashes like Skepta and Devil Man like I don't really like that clash I think it's good but it's not like the best one I'd like, prefer P Money and Big H right, to yeah, the Gets yeah, and uh, sorry to the Skepta and, and Devil Man clash mm. but um, do you know I, when I was young I was open to clashes because it was like it was beneficial but now unless it's like 
someone who's in a similar position to me mm. and unless I'm doing it because like Unless I'm doing it because I'm bored or whatever, <laughs> there's there's not much points because it's much, not going to benefit me. Right. There's only like, there's not even that much to lose other than this person is going to be seen as a better spitter than you. It's just mm. like if there's no real benefit for you, why are you going to do it? Like, what's the benefits of doing music? Yeah, yeah, it's a way to express yourself. It's a way to earn money. It's a way to better your life. You get me? What's the benefits of doing a clash with someone who's not on the same kind of level or doing the same stuff as you? Mm. There is no benefit. That's fair. That's fair still. Um, but one thing we were talking about off camera, which I just <coughs> want to talk about now, is just like, mm. clearly just from hearing you talk, like you've done your research, like you know what you're talking about when it comes comes to, to your art, innit? Mm. And how important do you think that that is for, you, for artists to look at what's happened before and look at the history of, of whatever they're doing, whether it's mm. crime, whether it's rap, whatever it is, like? To be honest, I don't think, I think it's only important if you want to strive to be a great artist, I feel like you have to know your history and where it comes from. Like, how can you not understand the music and the background of it, but mm. you're doing it? The thing that I hate the most is when people show ignorance to it. Because it's not even like, oh, I didn't know that's where it came from, that's right. the history. It's when, yeah, I know that's the history, but I don't care about all that. Right, right, right. That is just ignorance, because <laughs> without all of that, 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 you wouldn't be here, here, here. Right. So 100. that ignorance is is crazy. I don't understand how people can do that. Mm. And I'd love to know, like, full process, like what's going through your mind when you certain words come out of your mouth, you just sound like an idiot. Mm. Um, but I feel like it's important if you want to be the greats. Like, there's loads of good people, there's loads of good artists and musicians in the world, but when you look at the greats, like the top, top end of whatever their genre is, yeah. those are the people that actually show their appreciation towards their sound and, and know what they're talking about. Mm. Um, so I feel like you need to assess yourself as an artist and work out where you want to be, and then you'll understand how relevant that background and that history is to you. Right, right, right. No, I respect <coughs> that. Um, so in terms of you, then, as an artist, mm. um, two years deep now, who who was your influences? Who was people you looked at and thought, and respected or like took little bits of like for me when I when I watch you perform or yeah definitely performances um I, I think of gets mm. that's who I can like the aggression the, the hunger like um when it, when it came to like I compared you to Chip earlier but that was yeah. more that was more in terms of all, yes the hunger but also in terms of like obviously how young you are as well and how mm. much you the talent I saw at, at such a young age but in terms of like your actual style like the person person comes to my mind is Getz, so I'm just wondering who who are your influences when it comes to, comes to early that. influences was Getz, Griminal, Devlin, Little Nasty, um, Chip. That early, pretty much just anyone and everyone that was on F Radio. Mm. Those, those, but those five and out of those five, Devlin, Griminal, Getz, those three in particular. Mm. Like for me, Griminal was and will always be the best young MC to ever come from Graham. Devlin will be lyrically the best M lyrically the best MC to ever come from Graham. And Getz will be one of the best MCs because he can control the mic, he can control the rave, he's got lyric, he's got your reload bars, he's got mm. the lyrics bars, he just he's he's got every side of what makes a perfect MC. Like your best MCs to ever grace the game, like just a couple of them. You've got Skepta, you've got Getz, you've got uh, even more recently, you've got people like Novelist. Mm. Like, these are people that have clarity on the microphone. You can hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They've got flows, they've got content, they've got character. Mm. So they like, show everything that there is as an MC. <clears throat> um, more recent, or not recent, but less earlier, more while I'm doing it, uh, additional influences, I'd say Bugsy Malone, definitely. I would say... Why Bugsy out of interest? I, I like what... Uh, so doing grime music, it's a lot of energy and it's a lot of hype and it takes a real... I think it takes a different type of artist that can tell a story mm. like how Bugsy can, okay. especially like proper takes you on a journey and he's very involved in the artwork, in the video, in the production, the recording side. He's, in, he's an artist in every sense of the word. Right. So... And he's keeping it all within house as much as he can mm. and, and doing his own thing. And I feel like that's what a lot of men need to be focusing on rather than just trying to run and sign a deal. Because that might work for... Not that I'm knocking at that, that might work for some man, mm -hmm. but realistically it doesn't work for everyone. Right. And it's obviously more beneficial 
in the long run to have your own set up mm -hmm. as opposed to jumping on the back of a label. So I can appreciate his ability to tell a story because not a lot of people can do that. Mm -hmm. But also the level he's taking it, like, other than, say, your 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 Skeptors, your Wileys, your Stormzies, what other kind of artist can you say pretty much runs their city in terms of every person is behind them like that? Mm. Like, in terms of a fan base, you can say that everyone. Like, first thing I say is there's a lot of, like... I don't know if it's, like, people in London, like, you could be the biggest artist and they'll support you, but there'll always be, like, a good amount of people that just don't like your musical yeah. way for any reason. I don't know, like, <laughs> people are walking around London just moaning, just mm, whatever it is. But, like, my man's actually got the whole city of Manchester behind him. Mm. Like, that's how he established as an artist. Like, he had his city on lock and then he started getting love from everywhere else. That's, <coughs> that's hard to do, but that's something that people should be aiming to do, like, making <coughs> sure that they know where their fan base is and building it up from home. I think his... his um his balls and coming that chip as well, I think that helped mm. it as well because I helped that helped him in terms of like you say, Manchester might have been backing him, but in terms of like yeah. London people The exposure. Like yeah. The exposure, but just the fact that he was confident enough to mm. to do that because he Don't get me wrong, I think he I, I think he quite obviously <clears> lost <throat> to Chip. Like I mm. I'm I'm one of the biggest Bugsy Malone fans there is. Like I rate Bugsy more than I rate Chip. That's just my own personal mm -hmm. opinion. He lost that straight out and out. But realistically look up positions both of them are in now. Anybody that tells you Chip is on a better position and a better doing more than Bugsy Malone is lying, lying to you. Yeah, yeah. So deep I'm, it, I'm like, biggest, who had the I'm last laugh? Chip, I'm the biggest Chip fan going, so I, I can admit that as well, mm. so, yeah. It's like, who had the last laugh in the end? Yeah, you took L's on, on the clashes, but what, what are you doing now? Mm. Like, you're, you're everywhere. You're, you've got your album, you're doing these mad directed movies for your songs, like, it's crazy. When you talk about storytelling with Bugsy as well, you heard like his older stuff as well. Yeah, like, of course. The, the, the journey of evil, evil genius, genius, all of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm, listen, I've sat down, I've gone through yeah. all of them. I'm talking the, what's the flush raw freestyles? Right. I could tell you, no lie. I remember the days when I never could rhyme. None that Bugsy Malone, that jigsaw lyricist, I make the words combine. I know yeah, most yeah, of the yeah. freestyles back to back, like, because I'm, I'm, if I like an artist, I'll go back as far as I can to listen mm -hmm. to the music. So like, I'm definitely a, a big Bugsy Malone fan. Moving forward, like you're taking it back that to you, like, mm. are you surprised at how how quick you progressed in such a short space of time? Like, from like Glastonbury, BBC, mm. um, you, I think you've done stuff with with Red Bull and, and Nike as well. From what yeah, we've done a couple of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like that's those are big looks, bro. Like, are you are you, are you surprised, or do you feel like, or do you feel like, no, I've earned, I've earned that. Like, this is. I'm so part of the journey that I'm surprised that some of the opportunities, obviously, just because it's they're big opportunities, and when they just come out of the blue, or you get a message or a phone call saying, "Yeah, we got this," or "We're doing this," it's big. I'm surprised. It's great, but aside from the opportunities, am I shocked that I'm in the position I'm in, based on what I've done? No, because I've literally worked every single day from year eleven preparing for my exams mm -hmm. up until now like minimum I, I go sleep almost three four every single day because i'm writing lyrics or i'm planning stuff or whatever i'm doing like this like it's affected my health from like the age of 16 because i'm just always doing something mm -hmm. to progress my music more and more yeah so obviously i'm very happy to be exactly where i am but i'd be a little bit upset if I wasn't, wasn't around or right. near where I was, thinking about how much effort and time and passion I put into this, mm -hmm. like, especially of re like, I quit my job back in March. Yeah. So this is what I do full time. So this is, I've made this my life now. So it's like, if I don't get to the places where I want to be, then yeah, I'm going to be upset. I'm going to feel like, why hasn't this happened? Because I'm going to be like, I've put literally all my time and all more, my dedication. How much more can I put into this? Le legit, right. like, what else can I do, pretty much? Mm. There's this thing's grime, that thing's grime, it's grime when the grime become pop, but wait, it's not trying to hate. Come a long way from the bottom, it's true, but this is grime, music and culture. You don't get to pick and choose. It's like one minute you're a role model, throw on the hoodie, you're a dangerous you. The art in fools will call next man grime, like they in Afro, swing in a booth, now fam, that's dead. Give respect to the first man, they made a culture for the whole nation. They boot down doors for us, so I'ma lick down doors for the next generation. Trust so bad. Can somebody say our sound? Can we stop trying to let next man dictate something that we wanna build from the ground? SOS. 
Rocky, you know, man, I still old school. Young son, warrior, I'm coming like a Viking. If I go down, then I'll go down fighting. SOS. Where has the sound gone? I can't see it no more. SOS. SOS. I started spitting my bars with a pirate radio set to make me feel gas. So talking about your latest project, SOS, <laughs> um, what was the what was the thought process behind that? I'll tell you I'll tell you what I thought about it, but just before like what, did, what um, was your thought process? What was you what was you what was your purpose when you put that out? What was you expecting? What was you trying to do when you put that out? When you was making it even? Um it didn't really it I didn't think to myself, yeah, I wanna do an EP with Graham Legends. So like that wasn't the first initial thought. It was a Cool. I'm slowly linking up with people and I'm making really good songs as an impact point or as something to do. Do I want to just put out singles or like what do I want to do? And it's been, it would, it was coming up to a year since I'd put out my last EP, This Is Life. And I was like, you know what, let's do another project. And like everyone around me suggested that I do one as well. So it kind of worked out. And then where I happened to be linking up with these people at the time, the timing just worked out really, really well. Um, got seven, well, got five songs, and then decided that, um, okay, you know what, I want to put two more on there. Mm. Put together seven songs, all very different. And then it was like, when I started realising halfway through the producers I was linking up with and the type of instrumentals we was going with and the sound, it was like the proper original kind of roots of grime, that type of sound. And it was around the same time I was seeing a lot of stuff popping up where like these media outlets and, and journalists and bloggers were they were they were causing a lot of controversy around the association of of certain artists and certain genres. Like for example, bringing up the uh I, I saw in one one I saw in mo I saw in a newspaper and I saw in multiple blogs online that Jay Huss was a grime artist. Right. And even when I've had meetings with people in the past, I've actually sat there and had, a, I've sat there and had a debate with someone or, or conversation mm. before where someone has tried to convince me across the table, but no, Jay Huss is grime. <laughs> and it just, it, it, it boggles my mind mm. how people can just be so insensitive and just kind of, I don't want to say dumb, but it's like you can literally Google someone mm. and find out the type of songs they make and then Google another person and compare them. Do they sound anything alike? <laughs> Does friendly and common sense sound anything like man don't care and shut down? Mm. No, not at all. So why are people getting paid to sit down and blog about this? And why are we giving people that power mm. to influence kind of the, the public and sway their opinions on what this is and that is? And because that worked at the time of me doing my project and I was working and actually doing that original grime, grime sound as well, yeah. it linked together perfectly. And I was getting really, like, annoyed at the time mm. as well with all this going on. So I was like, you know what? I'm not just putting this EP out as a body of work. I'm putting this EP out as a statement to say, you know what? We are powerful individuals within the music scene that are on the upcome. And as musicians and as artists we control what music gets put out to the public. Mm -hmm. So why are we giving other people the power to influence our music and call it whatever they want for their own benefit? When Stormzy's doing well, he's a rapper. When he's in the paper for whatever else, he's a grand artist. Why is that? You don't get to pick and choose. Right, right, right. Get me? It's black and white. Either it is this or it is that. Like, let's not pick and choose. You get me? Because you can't... Life is good, life is bad. You don't pick the best bits of the good and try to cut away the bad. It don't work like that. Right. So definitely don't come and try to do that to the grime genre. Because the same way you wouldn't do that to your Drake and your Rihanna and anyone that's up there, up there in the whole entertainment world, mm -hmm. don't think that you can come over to flipping London or the UK and do that because we don't play that here. Yeah, you get me? Yeah, Whatever yeah. it is, like, don't. We're not the ones. We're not the ones. Like, for real. You just even when you talk about it like that just shows how much you care about Graham. Of course, saying like, and that's but that's rare. Like you, you say it like, of course, like it's like, like that's normal. Like that's not normal. Like, mm. and that's 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 it's even why when you do you here to have this conversation with you because it's like, pe people don't have that much care for their art as as and take that invest that much in, in their art as 
as as as you are. Do you know what I mean that's that's a rare. I just always looked at it as it takes one person to kind of make an influence or a change. Mm. And realistically, if it wasn't for your your your, your so solid crew and your heartless crew and your and your pay as you goes, then you wouldn't have grime. So all it took was like a handful of like twenty individuals to start a scene. And when you've already got a scene going and running, you can definitely kind of carry it forward and and push the message further with one person easily mm. or a group of people, especially in the type of the the, the, the age we live in of social media is even mm -hmm. easier. Like for 20 people to do that on minimal resources, a handful of people can definitely do that on a lot of maximum resources. For sure. And I don't wait around for anyone anyway. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? I don't need any help. You get me? It's just been me and my manager from the get go anyway. So we're not going to wait around for nobody. We're just going to go and do our thing. And so that's why I just keep pushing and I'm, I'm, I, I'm at where I'm at. And that have such like a passion and loyalty to the sound that mm -hmm. I do as well. So SOS stands for Save Our Sound, right? Yes. Um, what I really liked about it was like you said, it's it's, it's very much back into the like the old school sound of mm -hmm. of Graham. And like what I was surprised about was that we actually got like real songs on there. Like mm -hmm. it's it's not like I, like I was talking off camera again. Like there's a lot of MCs or rappers that if you put them in like a on a freestyle or whatever, mm -hmm. they can. They're sick, but yeah. you ask them to make a body of work and and make songs, and they can't do it. Like, or they're not they're not great. But mm. you you're like SOS. It's, it's it's a really well put together like song. Do you know what I mean? Um, even I think it's, is it me, you, everyone? Me, you, and everyone. Yeah. Like, bro, that like, that's enough. That's another side of you that like, I'm sure a lot of people haven't haven't heard of you, haven't heard from you unless they listen to maybe other projects. But, yeah, yeah, I don't. It's there's a variety of songs on there that are different to like songs that I've done before because mm. the whole point is I wanted to show as many sides to the grime scene within a body of work that I could um, so that like if somebody said so what's grime and you had to give them like one body of work like of recent mm. you could give them that and they would have a good understanding of what grime is um, and I feel like it, it's very hard to in, in a scene where there's a lot of people and a lot of people putting out music and even in a UK scene, it's hard to get your work kind of noticed like that. So it was like, I just got to do me, but I got to make sure that I show as much as I can, mm. if that makes sense. So it's like, get me EP, seven tracks, seven producers, every song different. Yeah, well, if that's what if that was, if that was your goal, then mm. you achieved it. Still, like, I appreciate it, was, it, brother. It was hard. Um, how did it feel for you to be able to, like you said, seven producers and they were all like legends? Like, how, mm. how did it feel to be able to get that acknowledgement from these from these legends and be able to say, like, at this point, be able to say, I've worked with these these guys. Like, I'm only nineteen, like, or eighteen. Mm. I've, done, yeah. I've done. Well, what to be is, fair, but... the EP was pretty much done bar like one or two tunes from when I was seventeen. Right. Well. So the EP, <laughs> the, the most five or six songs from the EP have been done since last year. So all the lyrics on there were already done as well. So all of the lyrics and everything was done from when I was 17 anyway. So it was like linking up with the producers was crazy for me because, again, obviously it's, like, it's a young age, but... And these people, you guess, I guess you listen to from time ago. Like, of course, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> instrumentals, like, get me, like, like... Just one of the people on there, like, Louis White, it's like... Louis White don't... <laughs> he don't show face for no one really like you'll mm. hear him making stuff occasionally over here for for roars or or for devlin but he's not about like that and then like even like legend like terra danger treble cliff mm. like maniac to make of maniac <laughs> like i first heard maniac on the the kid to adulthood with right. bashi j2k and 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 ghetto like mm -hmm. these are people that I've legit listened to their instrumentals from early, so to work with them, especially when half of them don't really work with people actively or they're very picky, picky. with who they choose because yeah. obviously they they they've got their own ideas in the head of what they want to do. To mm -hmm. be able to get instrumentals off of them and actually work together with the producers that are legends and they're sick, and I grew up listening to as well. Mm -hmm. It was a mad. It was a mad process, yeah. man, to actually deep. It was crazy. I think for me, like, like you could talk to you for five minutes, bro, and you can tell 
how invested you are in grime, how much grime means to you. Mm. So, like, for me, like, I, I can see exactly why these guys are working with you and why you get so much love from, like, legends and, like, you know, people that have been here for a long time because mm. you respect you respect them and you respect Definitely. what they've done. So they obviously they, they can see what you're doing and so they're going to show that, that love back. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's that's just the world, how the world works, isn't it? You show love. Definitely. That's what, you, that's what you're going to get back. Do you know what I mean? So, nah, that like, it's... it's if, you, if anyone hasn't heard, if anyone hasn't heard it yet, you need to go listen to SOS for sure. That's not your rhythm, it's just lending. Top boys really wanna hit up on the case with a rock, with a flip is peak when I'm gonna start sending, 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 sending shots. Wanna send shots, you're bound to get shot. Them way there are some internet bad man life in the flesh, everybody's like, huh? Huh? Blood, what do you mean what? Yeah. These tracks get a man rushed like top. Yeah. Go on and skeng man, say it with your chest man. If you're gonna do this, I'ma do it like what? what? Bring the beat down and let me do this. Dude. Cause this next bit is when I lose it. Yeah. It's the music business. Flip this, rip this, need a witness for the music. Huh. Claim you do it for the music. GG, huh. do it for the money, run, link up TV. Yeah. Next one says this grime that's shaky. Oh. You don't post grime on a daily. Yeah. Shut your mouth, you ain't there for the youth. Just another little... So obviously there's one song in there that I want to ask you about, Radio Danger. Yes. Um, and you talking about Bugsy Malone, and I just was saying about how like he, he had balls to come at to come at Chip like how he mm-hmm. did. I heard Radio Danger. I was like, I thought I had a couple of shots there from you. Yeah, like, <laughs> couple of shots there. I'm like, explicit with what I say. Stop. And I don't care. I, I was like, what? What? And like that's, that's the first song of yours I actually heard, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, that made me sit up and pay attention. I was like, right, like this guy's actually like going at TRM, going at mm-hmm. going at certain certain. Platforms going at the scene, even as, mm. as a whole, not even individuals, but as, as a scene. I was like, what made you, what, what made you decide to do that? What made you, not even decide to do it. What made you decide to put that on a, on a song and mm. like put that out there as like mm. rather than a post like a freestyle or a couple of tweets or whatever. Mm. You know what I mean, what made you? Could I swear? Yeah. You go for it. Yo, <laughs> no, well, obviously the lyrics on there was do it for the money. Fuck link up TV straight away because you know what I, I've literally seen everyone from the bottom of the barrel of the music scene to the top. Like mm. I've been around and associated and, and worked with people from the bottom all the way up to the top. So I've literally seen a good spectrum of what it takes. Mm-hmm. And half of these men that are in these positions are working behind big platforms. They know what goes on in ends. They know these kids running around getting stabbed, people getting running around and robbed, people selling drugs for money just because they want to try to do something and better their life. Mm-hmm. And half of them know that, you know what, if it's not sports, I'm going to do something in the entertainment industry. So they turn to music. Look at how drill pops off. Right. These are people with ballys literally running around, half of them are doing whatever. But you know what, they're making music as well because they're still trying to do something with their lives. Mm-hmm. So these are men that have either been through that or understand exactly what's going on and like to preach how they want to change this. And they're the first person to put out a tweet about we need to stop this violence and this, this and that, blah, 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 that everyone talks about, but no one really does nothing about it. Mm. Yet you justify... 300 pound upload fee to press one button mm. so that Donny can get his song on there. But then what? No promotion, no support, no marketing. Mm. What, what, 300 pound for a button? <laughs> I don't understand that. Mm. So especially in a world we live in where people are building their own platforms. And to make it worse is I've seen interviews and I've seen things before where certain platforms have talked and I've, I've spoke about how they, they want to push the youth and they want to see more fresh talent and fresh sounds coming through. Mm. But more time you only start messing and fucking with people when they blow up when anyway. A bit of a buzz, yeah, so I'm yeah. like, and, and, and you've got people that work in there that are A&Rs and the whole point of an a and is to scout talent. It is not to kind of piggyback Down off the it, back yeah. of a buzz. Mm. Cause there's bare people that have put out songs like a one hit wonder and it's like, where are they now? Mm. Or what are they really doing now? And it's like, I don't, I don't understand it. If you were really about UK music and you was really about the youth and that, for a start off, you'd quality control your channel. You wouldn't have just 300 pounds for an upload. Yeah. Cause there's some sick artists on there, both channels, on all channels that don't get recognized. That's another and there's some sure. shit artists on there. <laughs> but you know what, if you could pay for the upload, yeah, you can go on there. Mm. I mean, so there should be a lot more quality control and bun the whole upload fee. Because one thing on one channel that I like a lot is SBTV. If there's all the SBTV has been there from day one, you can never say nothing bad about them. Because Jamal quality controls his channel. He only puts stuff on there that's good. And it's never been an upload thing. So why do you think they can do mad stuff like like uh like you can have Dave on there doing the ghetto coyote bars and keys. You can do producers' houses. Mm-hmm. All of these type of things that people have gravitated to from day dot one. And it's just all been natural and good vibes. Yeah, yeah. Get me? 
business was never the main motivation. I feel like a lot of these men, they need to reevaluate themselves, how their love for music turned into a business priority. They're putting business over music. Mm. And yet you still want to be here preaching about how you're there for the music and for the passion. I'm not saying you're a culture vulture because you're very much invested in the culture, but the way you're choosing to manoeuvre around it right. and pick and choose, yeah, I, I don't rate that at mm. all. So that's literally why I said fuck Link Up TV because they are the worst out of all of them. They literally only care about business. They don't give a shit about music, full stop. The reason I said G uh, Grime Daily, GRM Daily now, once upon a time, Grime Daily, break that down. Grime Daily, Daily Grime. What was never seen on the channel? Grime <laughs> Daily, Daily Grime. So I don't understand how that kind of works. Mm. And then make it worse as well. They had good intentions. I see that they actually wanted to try an a and and even now they're doing GRM Records, right. they're doing the a and I think that's amazing. It shows that they're actually trying to get behind talent from early now. Mm -hmm. And they actually want to get behind and support people and build artists, which is what we should be doing in the UK scene. They do that over in America. There's loads of love over there. Yeah. Everyone strives and builds together. Finally, we're doing that in the UK. Mm -hmm. So that whole, uh, the, the Grand Daily thing, I wasn't, I was knocking them because they only wanted to jump on the back of people. But I feel like now they're doing the complete opposite. Like they're actually scouting talent from early yeah. and working with artists, which is what you should be doing from day one. So that's amazing. Um, and the whole thing just about don't post Grand Daily, obviously not even called Grand Daily anymore, they're called GRM. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I can't even hold that against them or nothing. Like, I, I, I respect what they're doing now, um, but no, nah, still bun Link Up TV. Link Up TV really ain't doing nothing. They need to take like a leaf out of GRM's book and start mm. doing stuff properly. But like the thing is like, I think I've written, I've written stuff about quality control and stuff mm -hmm. before but um just the fact that you the fact that because you're not the only person that holds them views do you know what i mean i'm sure you've had conversations with other artists or loads, loads of yeah. people that have that hold the same views um but the fact that you had that you went out on record and and, and said it like mm -hmm. that's 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 a good that's um i don't know like it's, it's a confident look do you know what i mean because it's, yeah, it's like it's what can you what can you really do what ban me from your channels and that, your channels <laughs> that i've never used or touched mm. ever out of the fact that I can make my own thing and probably make something that's, that's more meaningful to me. Mm. Anyway, like, I don't need... I'm living proof that you do not need to support from these big channels and these big industry people or whatever. You can do it yourself. There's loads of people that are living proof of that, that have built up their own thing. Mm. Like, even, look, look, before putting stuff, like, even Bugsy Malone putting stuff out on his own channel, the, was it the yeah, yeah. Evil Genius and... and, and whole movies that he's put on there. This is before any of the GRMs or your link ups or your SBTVs or your mixtape manners. This was just a man with a plan and he knew where he wanted to get. Mm. So there's bare people that are living proof that you can do it. So I feel like I'm happy to go on record and say, fuck this one and bun this one. Because you know what? It's not going to affect me anyway. I'm putting my views out there. I could say bun this channel, bun that channel, bun this person, bun that person. I don't care. I'm going to say what I like. Mm. Hit me. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say it if I was afraid of any repercussions or anything that there is. And when I feel really passionate about something and I just don't understand the type of fuckery that's blatantly going on, I'm going to speak out about it. Mm. Hit me. And the fact that I know there's other people that think similarly to me as well, because I've had these conversations, right. you can see tweets online, you can see online stuff on Instagram, mm -hmm. you can see it's not just me that thinks or, or thought that at the time. That just gives me even more confidence to speak with my chest because mm. I'm like, I'm not one out of five million that thinks this on my own. I'm not, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a daydreaming and I'm just making all this up or is it actually fact? Mm. You can see for yourself, so. But that's refreshing because obviously like we live in an era now where like artists don't like to, it's all about like relationships and mm -hmm. like, you know, artists don't like to say nothing in case it you know, upsets that person or upsets yeah. that person. So the fact that like, the fact that you that you will say what you what you feel of course. And, you're, and you're happy to do that without um, face whatever repercussions or mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? You don't care. Like if that's how I feel, I'm gonna put it out there. That's refreshing, bro. Like, that's. Well, yeah. as an artist, you need to create your talent and put your message out there. And and if you're and if you're censoring yourself because you're afraid of what's gonna happen mm -hmm. next, then how can you kind of use your platform and, and your full potential as a musician right. if you're if you're worrying about offending someone every two seconds? Like mm -hmm. we live in the 21st century where. <laughs> you got so much going on, like, mm. it's offence, it, it's, in certain places, it's deemed offensive to refer to someone as him or her. Mm. The whole, what is it, gender, gender neutral. Gender neutral, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> there's so many different ways of offending people in the 21st century, but you know what? Do you. Do you. You get me? Don't, 
don't say or move and constantly think, what if I offend this person? What about this? What about that? Move with your chest mm -hmm. and, and, and confidence and then worry about what's going to happen next. I'm not saying go run out and do some dumb stuff, but I'm saying, you know what? Move with your chest and move with good intentions. Good intentions. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get to where you need to go to. 100. Um, just moving on again, like, you just, I think you just wrapped up your radio show, right? With Represent. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was that experience like? What made you want to That was crazy. do that? Yeah, I got, I got to have my radio show. <laughs> like, I played the songs I wanted, mm. interviewed the people I wanted to. Like, it was mad. There's a lot of work, though. Mm. Anyone that wants to get into radio is a lot of work. Like, I could not do it if it wasn't for the producers, you get me? If it wasn't for Ashley, if it wasn't for Nana, if it wasn't for Adrian, like, I wouldn't have been able to do that without them. So, mm. producers do a lot of work behind the closed doors. It's not just yeah, the presenters. Yeah. Um, it was amazing because it's something new, something that long term I always wanted to get into. <coughs> you get me? Like, I'd love to eventually do that. Like, I don't know, like 20, 30 years time, whatever it is. Why? Well, well, why did you even want to do it in the first place? Like, what's, what is it about radio that, that, that you wanted to...? Well, I've done different radios <coughs> from pirate radio to, to youth friend radio, like Rep, to BBC. Like, I've seen a lot of them. So I wanted to see if I would enjoy it as much on the other no, side. Sorry. And I did. I really, really did. Mm. And it just reinforced what I thought I'd want to do towards the end of my career in being a, a radio host mm -hmm. and being able to support kind of upcoming artists and, and people that I think are going to do really well and kind of scouting talent. That's what I want to do long term. I mean, like, even with my label, I'm building up my label to do the same thing eventually. Like, I feel like in America, you've got your, you've got your death row records and you've got your... Um, I don't know, you've got your Def Jam record, you've got loads of different ones. Mm -hmm. But when you try it and, like, what's the equivalent over here in the UK of, of like, solely been built up by, like, a rapper or something like that, mm -hmm. the only ones that I can think of that's actually doing really, really well is, like, Disturbing London. Right. Get me Tiny Temper, like, mm -hmm. he's, he's a really good example of someone that's done that. Besides that, and to the level compared to your Def Jam. Right, that looked right. OK. Wh who, who's kind of done that in the UK? Mm. There's n like, it's n uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I've not seen that level of, 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 of labels and kind of behind that. Like, it's still the major three. You've still got your Universal, your Warner and your Sony. Like, mm -hmm. in terms of being run from a rapper or from, from the other side, there's not that over here. So I wanted to build up my label to do that. I wanted to see if I could be a radio presenter to then push music mm -hmm. um, um, from the kind of up and coming in the undergrounds and the, the young artists and really good musicians that don't have the opportunity or the platform. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see if I'd be able to do that and if I would enjoy doing that. And I did. You did. So. How long, how long were you doing it for? Uh, so I did three shows. First show I did was, uh, I think it was Maniac, yeah, Maniac and Logan Sama interviewed. Second show, first hour was everything SOS EP, second hour interview of one of my heroes, Devlin, and Freestyle back to back as well. Mm. Amazing. Third show was. I saw that on your channel, actually. Uh, I saw that on your, on your channel there. Yeah, listen, yeah, 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 amazing feeling. And then the last show, I had to keep it. Get me as a it was a Lewisham takeover. Yeah. Mm. So that was really sick as well. Nothing but Lewisham music on the airwaves, nothing but Lewisham MC. <laughs> so it was a it was a great experience and it 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 didn't make me shy away from what I want to do long term. It just reinforced it even more. It. That's, that's sick, man. Um finally, what what have you got next? Like, what's coming up for the uh, Um shows, you see me at a couple shows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um yeah, I've got some really exciting content on the way, really exciting songs, got some singles coming. Some collaborations. Load well. collabs, <laughs> got some really sick collabs coming. Mm. Got um loads of work in the pipeline for next year as well. Like I've We need to do like another interview in a year's time yeah. just to like see what's gonna happen because the there's so too. much stuff planned and it's gonna be like a really exciting journey. So I just hope everyone stay tuned and kind of follows. The journey from now. Mm. Are we easy, Mo? Thanks for coming. Appreciate it, man.